OK, so let's discuss the autumn statement in more detail with the Welsh Secretary, David T.C. Davis. Borada, good morning. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Yeah. Falling Borada. living standards, we're expecting high unemployment, we've got poor economic growth figures. Times are tough across the world, there's no doubt about that. But they're particularly tough here, aren't they, because of 12 years of Tory economic mismanagement? No, they're, they're tough across the world. They're tougher in some countries than they are here. And, and it's not because of 12 years of economic mismanagement. Let's be clear. It's about what's happened over the last three years. We had a COVID pandemic, which has hit economies across the world, creating um, inflation uh, as, we, as we came out of it. And then it was followed up by the invasion of Ukraine. So other countries are facing exactly the same problems, many of them facing much worse but problems. But according to the, the respected began four or five institute... Years ago. Sorry to interrupt. According to the respected Institute for Fiscal Studies, they say the UK government is reaping the costs of a long-term failure to grow the economy. People in Britain are getting a lot poorer after a series of economic own goals, they say. Well, I wonder, you know, I don't think we're going to have the time to, to go into that in great detail, but you'll be aware that we came into power in 2010 in coalition on a, on a platform of balancing the books, having seen a collapse in the economy as a result of the, uh, the the crash in 2008. And we actually, we managed to do that without hitting the most vulnerable and got re-elected in 2015. But then we were hit by a further two shocks, which were COVID and the um, invasion of the Ukraine. These are massive shocks that hit countries across the world. We spent £400 billion during the COVID crisis. Um, and that we borrowed that money by, by and large, borrowed a lot of it. And that money is now, we're now having to pay a price for that. We can't borrow any more money cheaply. But of course, We've all countries that. have had the, to deal with the financial Absolutely. crisis, have had to deal with Absolutely. the global pandemic. The charge is that things are more difficult here because things haven't been managed properly. For example, let's look at wages here in Wales. There's well, can been I just a stop consistent you there a minute? Can I, trend. Can I just stop? Because, James, you, you, you've quoted a lot of figures at me. We've had the, first, the third highest growth in the G7 over the last decade. So it's simply incorrect to say that, um, that things have been mismanaged here. Okay. The third can, highest can, can growth amongst the wages? wealthiest countries of the world. Can we talk about wages then? Because here in Wales, there was a pretty consistent trend from the 1970s up until the financial crash in 2008. Wages were going up. Since then, and for most of that time, your party has been in power, wages have stagnated. And no mm -hmm. wonder there's a cost of living crisis today because we're looking at potentially two decades worth of lost wage growth. Well, first of all, I think you'll find that they've stagnated in real terms if they have stagnated at all. So they've, they've, they've gone up with inflation. Secondly, the last 12 years have been very difficult. But we had a financial crisis which happened in 2008. And by the way, the Conservatives weren't in power, although I'm not laying the blame necessarily at Labour's door for that. We then got hit by two further shocks of the sort that one might expect to happen once a century. And despite all that, we still have the third highest growth in the G7. So I, I absolutely accept We've, had, we've got massive problems. I, 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 I listened to, to what people were saying earlier on, and I, I absolutely get that. You know, it's, these are very difficult financial times. But when you look at this budget just now, which I hope we were going to talk about a bit, you can see we've gone out of our way to target help at the most vulnerable. We've managed to, uh, to find the money to make sure that pensions go up in line with inflation, the living wage goes up with inflation. And there was a young lady you speak to earlier on about the importance of that so that people on the lowest wages can afford to, to get food and benefits going up in line with inflation as well. Those are quite difficult things to do, but we made that our priority. And on top of that, we've made sure that the payments continue to go out, £900 to families on benefits, 300 to pensioners, and 150 uh, to those who are disabled. So we really, really, we absolutely understand what people are saying. All of those people you've just interviewed now were, were quite right. These are very tough and difficult times, and that's why we've gone out of our way. We've done everything we possibly okay, can but to let's look at tax ensure the help then, goes because to those, A lot of people are going to be paying a lot more tax. And, you know, as someone who backed Liz Truss to be Prime Minister on the back of her tax-cutting agenda, I just wonder what you make of the fact that taxes are about to go up to their highest level since the Second World War. Well, if you want to raise money, there are only two ways to do it. You can either borrow it or you can tax it, or I suppose you can cut public spending as well. Now, we can't borrow money, any more money at low rates of interest. We, we tried that. Liz Trust tried it. It didn't work. The lenders will not lend it. So that one's out of the question. We can all agree on that. That leaves either two alternatives, either cutting spending, and that means cutting pensions, cutting spending for health and education, or raising taxes. I know what I'd, I mean, ideally, I'd love to, to live in a low tax uh, economy, but I'm not prepared to, to support cuts in public spending, and I'm not so prepared to support cuts in payments to people who are on benefits 
or or or, or to the living wage. Um, and and so so actually, we've gone against what we wanted to do be, precisely because we need to help those most in need. And, and with the greats of respect, what I don't hear from Labour is an alternative plan. They say they don't want to increase borrowing. Okay. They say they don't want to, to increase the, taxes. Uh, they don't tell us. They don't tell us where bills. they're going to get the money from for all of these for all of these things. Of course. Okay. Let's turn yeah, to please, the let's support. Turn to that. Um, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Let's turn to the support for energy bills. Obviously, it's going to be less generous uh, from April, and for middle earners in particular, they're going to see a big increase in the amount they're going to be paying for energy. On top of the tax rises as well. Well, we all will. I mean, I mean, we can't do anything about world energy prices. So, so we can't do anything about the fact that Russia, the biggest exporter of gas in the world, is now uh, we we don't you know is now sanctioned and quite rightly so for the disgraceful invasion of the Ukraine. And and we can't do anything about the fact that the rest of the world is now scrabbling to buy gas from the other available places. Qatar being one of them, of course, but also the United States. So we are competing in a world market. What we've what we've done is two things. First of all, in the short term, we've made sure that there is a guarantee, a fixed guarantee as to how much prices can go. That's been very expensive, but again, a very important thing to do. We've managed to extend that beyond April, which is when it was originally due to end, to go forward to another financial year. And at the same time, we are taking the difficult decision to um, release more licenses so that we can ensure that there's more gas and oil available. What about businesses then? Because they don't know what support they're going to be getting, but the Chancellor's saying, look, many more businesses are going to have to go it alone. They're going to have to look after themselves, and a lot of them are going to really struggle. Well, yeah, I, I accept that. I mean, we can't bring down the world supply of... Um, we, we can't bring down the price of, of gas and oil when there is a shortage in the world. We can try and increase the amount that we're producing in our own country, and I hope we'll have support from the Labour Party and the SNP for that. It'd be nice if they if they would support it, um, but they're sitting on the fence at the moment, or in the case of the SNP, actively trying to prevent that. Um, I, you know, we, Well, we they'd say in, that you need to invest more in, in various... renewables. Well, we're doing that as well, of course. We're doing that at the same time because we need to get every sort of gig, a megawatt hour of electricity we can. So we've got floating offshore wind project taking place off the coast of West Wales right here. And, and the, the money to put in place, the infrastructure for that has come from the growth deals, which are still being fully supported by the government. So, so of course, you're right, but we are already um, doing that. Uh, uh, look, it's a, it's a very difficult situation, but it comes down to this. We can't borrow money cheaply, as we all accept. We have raised taxes. Um, but there's a limit to how far we can do that. You're rightly questioning me about the fact that we've raised taxes. But at the same time, we all want energy guarantees. We all want benefits okay. another, and pensions another to go specific up in line with on inflation. And we all want more then. money for public services. Another what specific on energy support, because um, is well, Secretary, a lot of people in Wales, in rural mid and west Wales, live off the gas grid. They heat their homes using uh, liquefied gas or heating oil and so on. Now, the government initially offered £100 support for these people. You said at the time that that was certainly not generous. How would you describe the new offer of £200? Well, can I just say, you know, that, that came out of a select committee inquiry hearing where I was asked, is that generous or not? I'm not going to say anything is generous. I'd always like to be more generous than we're being. But I, I think the word was taken out of context. We've doubled the amount from 100 to £100 uh, to £200. We've also made sure that those uh, small businesses that are also off grid will get um, a payment as well of £150. So, again, we've done what we can. Now, you, you start by criticising me for the fact that taxes are being raised, which I accept. Um, but at the same time, the criticism is we're not spending enough money. Now, I just would respectfully say, I hope you're going to be asking Labour politicians when they come on where they think the extra money is going to come from for all of these schemes, for the energy guarantee, for the increase in pensions, benefits, the living wage. OK, if we'll ask them, we'll ask them when they're on. Can I just finish with Do, the... I, I've, I've, I've been waiting for weeks to hear the well, answer. Let's just, let's anyway, just finish we'll with the reports in the Sunday Times about uh, Gwent police officers, some still serving, some of them retired, uh, reports of misogynistic and racist text messages sent between serving and retired officers. What do you mm. make of those reports? Well, obviously, as somebody who spent nine years serving as a police officer, I'm absolutely appalled by it. I didn't see behaviour of that sort myself, though I was with a different force. Um, but I know Pam Kelly, well, the chief constable, I know she will be absolutely appalled by the uh, by the alleged behaviour, and she will be fully investigating. In fact, she's confirmed that she's doing so. What about this so call for a wider national inquiry into police forces in England and Wales? Well, I think most of the allegations we've seen have centred on Gwent Police. I, and I think that's something you should 
perhaps take up with the Home Office, but clearly um, the, the culture of the police in some area, it, within some, there are individuals who are letting the police force down, let me put it that way, and that is unacceptable. But I, I can truthfully say I didn't see that kind of behaviour when I was working within British Transport Police, and there was a very good atmosphere there. There okay. were also a very high percentage of people coming from ethnic minorities, which are fully welcome, um, and also um, female officers. So I think ca- the culture can vary in different forces, but clearly what's gone on uh, has been unacceptable. Please let me just add, though, the vast majority of police officers do a very, very good job in difficult circumstances. Okay, thank and you very much. And they'll be as angry as, as we are. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much, David T.C. Davis.